Right, so we're going to prove this limit and see why it's equal to zero. So the first step that you are going to have to do is we're going to have to manipulate this limit to render it solvable. So we're going to have to introduce something to it. And the thing we're going to introduce is cos of x plus 1 in the numerator and denominator respectively. The reason for this is because in the numerator we're going to have a difference of squares and you're going to see why in a moment why we need to do this. So cos of squared of x minus 1 in numerator and then we got this in the denominator so we know that when we apply this trig identity sine squared of x plus cos squared of x is equal to one we can rearrange it to solve for cos squared of x minus one and we know that's going to be equal to negative sine squared of x we are then going to take this negative sine squared of x and replace it in the numerator of this equation right so once you have done that what you are going to have to do at this point is basically sp split this fraction into two so you're going to have the first fraction which is sine of x divided by x and then the other secondary fraction which is negative sine of x divided by cos of x plus one we are then going to distribute the limit to both of these fractions and therefore we're going to have two limits to solve for so the first limit is a pretty pretty unique limit and it could basically be solved via the squeeze theorem and geometry and we know that's going to be equal to one the the right limit over here the secondary limit is is basically a straightforward limit to solve all you are going to have to do is replace x with zero and what you are going to have is sine zero divided by cos zero plus one and you know zero divided by negative two is still equal to zero say on a test you lot and you know it's going to be equal to zero but say on a test you lot forget what the limit as x approaches zero sine of x divided by x is you basically have a zero multiply with this limit over here so no matter what number you lot have over here you whenever you multiply something with zero you, you are going to have zero basically and therefore this is why when you solve for this limit you lot end up with an answer of equal to zero so if you lot enjoyed this video please drop a like and subscribe and i'll see you lot later